Hi, maybe you are looking for a soldering station to buy and you are not sure which one is the best for you. So stick to this video and we're gonna have a look on this uh, YCS S1 soldering station. And maybe like that you're gonna find out if it's a good one for you or you need to look for a different one. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back guys to another video on my channel. So I'm gonna review the YCS S1 soldering station today. So I have this soldering station for a while now and I'm using and I can say that I'm really happy with how it works and uh, it's really quite well calibrated and what is nice because you can uh, preset your temperature that you are using mostly if different uh, soldering that you are doing a bigger one or smaller one or really tiny solderings so you can select uh, straight away the temperature that you preset over here you have four channels and it's really uh, nice you don't need uh, every time to increase or decrease the temperature because you already preset it and you just press one button and it will gonna work so what I'm going to do first is to power on and to show you a bit um, this uh, menu that has over here. And then we're going to see how good is uh, calibrated this uh, machine. So let me find a power cord and I'm going to power it and we're going to see the calibration, how it is good measuring with this uh, tester. So here we go. I already connected the cable. So let's turn on. So the switch is at the back. So with that one, you turn it on. And I can see here I preset uh, my uh, temperature. On channel one, I have uh, 280. On channel two, I have 300. On channel three, I have 350. And in channel four, I have 400 degrees. And uh, just to modify, you go to the channel that you want to modify, and you can see. You can go, let's see, lower. I'm gonna just give you an example. 100, then you press set. So channel uh, four, and I'm going to and you can see you just uh, select there and it will gonna put you the the right uh, temperature over there. So if you want then to buy, put it back to 400, just go to 400 and you just keep hold it and you are gonna put it on channel 4 the temperature that you selected okay so let's turn on the thermometer for the measuring the tip from the soldering station and now we're gonna start with the preset the 280 degrees so you can see there it's set up on that one and i'm gonna just uh, take my soldering iron and uh, we're gonna see that shows 280 over there and let's see how many degrees we're going to show you over here. So 285, 282, 280, 277. And because I'm not keeping properly good this one on, on, uh, on the tip. But uh, anyway, it's quite well. See, I'm skip sliding. So let me hold it perfectly over there. So now it's okay. So it's quite fluctuating a bit, but uh, I can see it's quite near to 280. I'm gonna switch now to 300. So you can see here is a 300 now selected. So let's have a look what's going on. So it's boosting up to 313, then it's stabilized and it's getting down back to 296. And then it will gonna stabilize again. So let's wait for stabilizing. Looks like it's still uh, in 289. I'm not doing a good contact. So let me put a bit of uh, soldering wire on the tip. Like that is doing a better contact with the... So I can see now with a little bit of solder on the tip that make a better thermal uh, transfer is properly 301. So it's calibrated really good. So yeah, let's now switching to 350. So I can see now it's 350. So let's have a look what it's doing over there. So it's ramping and then it's uh, trying to stabilize. So I can see 351, 350. Yeah, it's measuring correctly. Let's uh, try the 400. So I can see now I'm in the 400 degrees. So let's see what it's doing in 400. So it's bump, ramping up and then it's cooling down to stabilize the temperature. And I can see there is keeping properly perfect just uh, 
few degrees difference between them so yeah let's go back to 280 right now because 280 i don't test it with the little uh, or with a solder bulb over there to do a better thermal conducting between the iron tip and the sensor so let's have a look if it's uh, getting down to the temperature of 280 so i can see here it's cooling down it's still uh, 309 so it's getting cooling down definitely this one is refreshing more fast than the thermometer that i am using to measure so you can see 285 stabilize is getting lower a bit and let's see if it's getting back to properly 280 so no it's stabilizing 283 no look it's getting a bit lower so maybe you need a bit of time because it was ramped to 400 and now it's going down but anyway it's quite calibrated nicely so yeah like you can see it's really calibrated nicely so the temperature that you set is the temperature that you're gonna have it on the tip measured with this uh, thermometer for uh, measuring the tip of soldering uh, irons so as i said i use it for a while and i really like it so let me now show you what is coming uh, when you purchase this uh, station so when you purchase this station it's come with these three standard tips that almost all the soldering station will gonna give you so you have a chisel one which is this one then you have a bent one and you have the pointed one which are standard to soldering and do micro soldering with them and uh, the one that i'm using now is one that i purchased separately i'm gonna put the links on the description down below from where i got all my tips because i have lots of uh, t245 tips over here and uh, i'm gonna get them out all of them because I get also separate different one. These one are T12, which I used before and I still using now. Actually, the soldering station which I build it, uh, you're gonna see a link on the description of the video when I build one my uh, T245 uh, soldering station, which working also with T12. Now I'm using for the T12. So I'm using this one for T245, and the one I build it, I'm using with T12 soldering iron tips. So here we go. I purchased also some different ones because uh, when you are dealing with some uh, bigger soldering you need a big tip like this one and mostly also this one i purchased it you know when you are dealing with bga and you want to clean the parts of the chip or the clean the parts of the pcb it's better to have a big one like that you clean much easy and you don't rip off the parts because uh, more temperature it will gonna be transferred to the pcb or to the ic like that you can do a really nice cleaning then i have different one a bent one thicker than the standard that comes with the uh, soldering station then i have uh, this one i believe is a bc3 then i have another tip over here which is the conic point which is quite bigger than the one that's coming over there then I have uh, BC2 and I use the same BC2 because this one I buy two BC2s that is now on the attached to the soldering station. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to try to do some uh, test soldering a bit uh, with this uh, soldering station to see how that performs. So I'm going to use this board for uh, testing the soldering station to see, show you how uh, well perform. So I can see here I scrubbed a bit of the soldering mask in order to do a really big uh, solder. I can see here it's all ground and it's a really big uh, place where to solder. So definitely we're going to need a lot of heat. So I'm going to set up my uh, soldering station to 350 degrees. And uh, I already installed it, uh, the BC3 iron tip which is uh, a bit bigger so let's go under the microscope to see how performs this uh, soldering so let me set up my microscope over here let's turn on the lights on the microscope and uh, let me switch uh, to the microscope right now and uh, have a look to this uh, piece of uh, bulb which i prepared here to do a soldering so you can see this uh, part is a really big part of uh, ground all this is ground and i just scrap it there in order that i can uh, do a soldering so let me get some uh, soldering wire and uh, you can see i'm not using any flux so let's see without flux 
how it will gonna perform so let me look on on the, the microscope okay so i'm gonna try now to do this uh, big patch here with 350 degrees so let's see how well it will gonna perform so you can see a bit is struggling with 350 degrees and i don't have any flux put it on the pcb so let me ramp up to 400 so now i'm in 400 degrees and let's see with 400 degrees as you can see is doing a really good job also without flux is doing really a good job I can melt it and can uh, stick on all this uh, solder i can see it's doing a really nice blob of folder so let's put also a bit of flux to see under the flux how it's doing. So let me get my flux over here. Okay, so let's uh, put some flux over there to see with the flux because the flux is going to take a bit of temperature because it's uh, some liquid over there, right? So I'm going to leave it same in 400 degrees and let's have a look now how it's doing with 400 degrees and the flux on the, on the PCB looks like he's managing to do really well with the bc3 let's now to swap to the bc5 the bigger tip that i have to see how it's performed with the bc5 so i can see i installed the bc5 and i uh, put it now to 350 the soldering station so with the 350 degrees with the bc5 look how nice the soldering is doing for a big piece like that that they need a uh, lots of heat transfer to the PCB board so yeah when you do big soldering use a big tip so I installed the chisel tip on the handle so I'm gonna try to remove uh, with the soldering iron this capacitor over there like that uh, we're gonna see if it's uh, managed to do that one so let's first uh, apply a little flux over there like that we can uh, have some flux on the capacitor so 350 degrees and I can see I have the chisel and we're going to try to remove the capacitor using the chisel. And I can see very easy removing a capacitor, you don't need the hot air station. Let's try also to solder back this uh, capacitor using uh, the, the chisel instead of the hot air station and I can see you're doing really nice to remove a capacitor let's see the next one is the a capacitor a bigger one you can see this one is quite big this one is bigger than this one and i think it's not a capacitor is a is a coil so let's try to see if we can remove but i need to turn over the board so let me turn over the board because i'm near to that um, capacitor over there and I might touch the capacitor with the iron and I'm gonna melt it. So where was that that uh, that component that we were gonna we was trying to to desolder, which was a bit bigger. So I'm trying to find it. I lost it. Uh, should be someplace here. Yeah, is this one over here? No. Because was a capacitor and was a, a coil. So where did it disappear? So let me have a look. Okay, so I think I found it. So it was uh, this one over here that we try because here is the flux which I use it. So let's try to get that one out of the board using the soldering iron and not a, not a hot air station. So I can see very easy to remove. Let's try also to solder back. So we're going to transfer the heat over there. We're putting the capacitor. We hold it in place and we remove the iron. And looks like it's doing a really great job. I really like it. And uh, let's reduce to 300. Let's see with the 300 degrees if it's doing a, a, a good job. So let's try this capacitor over here to remove it, this one over here. So let's try it 300 degrees right now. And the same with the chisel tip. And with the flux over there. 
Let's see. See, with our flux, is a bit struggling. So let's apply some flux to see with 300 degrees and a little flux if it's doing well. So I'm going to apply there a little flux on that capacitor. Yeah, we have a little flux. Let's put all that that come out. And let's try it now. With flux, maybe it will gonna do better. I can see already is melting better if you are, uh, if you putting flux, and we can remove the capacitor. And if we need to put it back, you just put it there, hold it in place. Oh, sorry, my hands are shaking. So let me get it off. Let me put it back there. We can put it in place, hold it down, and remove the iron. And have a look. It's soldering really nice. Let's try a resistor. What do you think? So 300 degrees, a resistor without flux and looks like it's moving nicely. Soldering back is the same process. Really easy and nice. Yeah. Tell me in the comments down below, what do you think about this soldering station? So yeah, this soldering station, since I bought it, I say I'm using and I'm really happy how it performs. It's a really powerful one. I can see very easy you can desolder capacitor or resistor SMDs. I also did uh, some uh, soldering on uh, true hole. I'm gonna put a video down below when I use it for true hole components. It's pointless to show you now because I don't have any board for testing. That board that I'm using is for testing and for some spare components that I have there. Some pumps and some uh, transistors and some resistors and capacitors. So. That's why I use that board to show you this test on desoldering and soldering back few components. So overall, I'm really happy with this and uh, definitely if you are looking for a soldering station, I really can uh, recommend it. It is uh, powerful and is not costing so much expensive. And please let me know in the comments down below if you would like to do another video opening and show you how it is inside. Because if you are interested, definitely I will gonna do also another video opening and show you how is inside which power supply I have and uh, how is uh, the quality build with the components on the PCB boards inside of this uh, YCS S1 soldering station. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, subscribe and activate the notification bell to be notified when I'm going to upload new videos. And until the next video, guys, have a good day and bye bye.